Welcome everyone. Today I am making a mini matchbox and Easter box and I'm using the spring knives for to decorate that. And I would say uh, if you like them, hop on over to MFT and buy them as soon as you can. Um, they are uh, retiring stuff all the time. So I have colored a whole bunch of the images out of that stamp set, most of them just with a polyochromas. And I'm also going to use some of those uh, foliage uh, branches that I used on a previous project. So first I'm going to cut down the box and the box uh, measures five and a quarter by six inch and the kind of belly band is three inches by six and three three quarters um so yeah next step for me is going to be to uh, decorate this with some stamping i am going to do tone on tone so i'm going to use the lemon drop ink on top of the lemon drop cardstock to kind of get that watermark effect uh, by the way, uh, all of these measurements, uh, the schema are on my blog where you also can find the cut files, SVGs and PNGs, um, also templates if you rather have that. So all of those things are uh, over on my blog. You can download a zip file for free. Uh, it will be linked in the description down below. So after the stamping, we're going to do the box and the box is pretty simple. Score at three a quarters and one and a half inch so that you do that on all four sides to make the edge of the box. This box is going to have a soft edge which makes it much easier to pull it out, out of the belly band and also you won't cut yourself when you do that. You score at two, two and three quarters, five and five and three quarters for the belly band. Then I am going to burnish all of the edges. Uh, I'm using another scoring tool for that or yeah, bone folder, that's the word, uh, to do the burnishing. Uh, that is a kind of softer bone folder. It's also a little bit heavier and you get um, much, much better kind of score lines. It's a Teflon bone folder. So for the cutting uh, on the short side, you want to cut out, cut up two of those uh, score lines. Uh, those are going to be the edges that you pull out of the box. And then you cut up uh, one of the lines on the longer sides. So that is the first steps that I do for this. Then I'm going to make little tabs and the tabs are going to be uh, like they're stuck to the longer sides uh, so they're next to the shorter side middle part um, and that is so that you get a little bit more strength in the pulling side of the box and I'm going to do that same here uh, and what I do is basically take the little square that is closest in the corner or in the inner corner and then I just miter the edges of that little square just so that I get little tabs. By mitering those tabs because you can't see them uh, it will be easier to put the box together because uh, otherwise if you just have them straight sometimes it can be hard to fold together. I am going to use a combination of Sukwon tape and glue. You could probably get away with using just your regular tape runner when you are using glue together with a box in, in the box. However, if you're making a box that um, doesn't use glue, then Sukwon tape is the way to go, all the way to go. Um, I just used it here because I like it and I really wanted this box to, <laughs> to be sturdy. Uh, it's something I want to give away uh, to a family member. I then burnish all of the tapes. I only do this because then the stickiness will stick down to the box instead of being on the peeling paper. So the peeling paper is so much easier to get, a, get off of the... Uh, and keep the tape on the the box. Uh, 
Then I'm gonna use a little bit of glue on the inside here. I'm doing the combination of the glue to get them to stick together. I just line up the edges of the corner and then I pinch down that little tab. Um, and that is how I get the box to kind of sit together. And as again, because I mitered that edge, um, it's much, much easier to just line up that corner. And after everything is put together, I am going to uh, fold down all of the sides. But first I need to remove the rest of the sticky paper. And I should have removed that last uh, of the inner pieces before I started. But hey, hindsight is twenty twenty, right? Right. Uh, so after peeling off those fiddly papers, I'm just going to add a little bit more glue. You don't need a lot of glue, uh, it will stick together anyhow, and the sequin tape will help holding everything down. So just fold everything in, carefully not to get glue all over me. I have a tendency to do that. And then you have the drawer. So now we're going to do the little belly band on the shorter side which is actually measures the middle to the middle of the box so you will get like a middle line at the bottom uh, i add some sequin tape and a little bit of glue just over that tape i put the box in upside down i fold in the one without the glue and then i fold in the one with the glue I got one a little bit crooked you can't really see it if i don't show you that but um it's pretty easy to get straight um, and because I didn't wrap it too tight uh, it's pretty easy to get the drawer in and out but it's tight enough to hold the drawer so the drawer doesn't kind of fall out itself. Here is my little gnomes. Uh, I have one just in Copics, one in just pencil and then I have that one that I'm going to use which have the YO2 um, yellow marker uh, on the hat, the feet and the gloves and then I use polychromos on top of that so the yellow pops a little bit better. To start off with the decoration on the outside of the box I'm going to use this little piece of grass that I've just been having laying around. Um, I try to use up as much as possible on my scraps at the moment so that I don't have to throw anything away. I move the box a little bit further in so that uh, I don't glue it shut when I glue down all the pieces because I'm just going to work from the quote-unquote bottom up. Uh, after I added that I didn't cut it directly because it still was wet and I thought I just cut it at the end and it worked really really good. I pick out the little branches that I want to do. I want to kind of frame my little gnome with those branches. I thought that would be pretty cute. And I'm going to put down all of these with glue. Uh, so I'm going to show you here how I add the glue. But for the rest of them, I just cut that out because you don't need me to see me just adding glue to all of these pieces. You could use like this uh, siren sticker maker like I did on some of my cards first cards here however I really like that I can move these a little bit before the glue of kind of sets uh, which you can't really do with a sticker maker it is uh, tape glue so if, when you stuck it down it's usually stuck um, so I add a, a couple of easter eggs to make it a little bit more easter um, and before that middle egg dries I add the gnome uh, under it and just kind of centered uh, in the branches and then I add three little carrots uh, in the branches it was supposed to be and then I realized I needed to fill something up at the top and for the final touch I'm taking some more of those carrots because I colored a whole bunch of them and I add them on the edges uh, just to give it a little bit more of a design um, and get the get the box to pop a little bit more. The finished part is just cutting off the grass that is on the ends and that is the little box all done and designed. I really liked it. I I actually made it to fit little um, lint mini Easter eggs, chocolate eggs, so if you have those you can fill it up. It takes about eight of them 
uh, and yeah that is my box and filled with a lint chocolate if you like this uh, little box uh, please thumbs it up if you have any questions or comments just comment down below if you want to see more videos like this and isn't subscribed just hit that subscribe button and i will be back with a video next wednesday however if you want to see my sketch challenge entries you can find them on my blog on mondays but thank you again for watching and i will see you later bye